Hello, my name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and this is my channel, Have Roots, Will Travel. I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. This is um, what we've been doing here. We've been doing biographies for the last year of Les Filles du Roi, the King's Daughters, the founding mothers of Quebec. Each and every week, I take one Filles du Roi and I examine her life and her contribution. So this has been an exciting journey for me. It wasn't one I planned, it just kind of evolved. So join me as we um, are starting on number episode number 80, if you can believe it. So uh, before we, we move on, I wanna make sure that you know, I have a website called haverootswilltravel.com. You can also see past episodes on that as well. And I have links to that, so check that out. Um, and I'm on Facebook. And I do instant messenger as well. So if you have any comments or concerns or questions, please feel free to email me, Lisa at have roots will travel, uh, dot com, or you can post a comment below, or you can post it on my Facebook group, any which way I will respond, I promise. So with that being said, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification alert so you know um, when I post new content, which right now is about twice a week. Les Filles du Roi was the program begun in 1663 by the Intendant Jean Talon. I go into this in great detail in um, the video that I produced called The Program 2.0. And have a look at that. It's in the, um, it's in the you know, in the playlist. And uh, check that out to get you kind of familiar with what the ladies had to go through in order to reach New France. So let's get started and find out who's number 80. So this week we are examining Anne Brandon. I'm saying it with a French accent. It could easily be Anne Brandon, but I'm assuming that that's how they pronounce it. This is a viewer request. I do not have her in any of my um, files. So let's get to know Anne a little bit better. So um, she was born in 1640 in the parish of Saint Laurent in the township of Sedan, France. Uh, her parents were Danielle Brandon, Brandon, and Jeanne Brouly. Um, and she, the Sedan is a commune in the Ardennes department and is found in the northeast part of France. You can see from the middle of the screen the, on the map just how close it is to Belgium. Sedan was founded in 1424 by the 16th century and it became a place of refuge for the Protestant refugees from other parts of France. Until 1651, the Principality of Sedan belonged to La Tour d'Auvergne family. It was at that time a sovereign principality, but because of some very dark drama, which you'll have to you know, explore yourself, involving one of the princes, they needed to exchange his life for the kingdom. It was then annexed to France in return for sparing the prince's life, the things that would go on. The original church dedicated to Saint Laurent was built in the 15th century. In the beginning, it was used by Catholics and Protestants together, but after 1600, it became a Protestant temple. In 1642, the county became Catholic again, and the church too. And then from 1688 until 1692, the church was rebuilt and enlarged and dedicated to Saint Charles Borromeo. During the revolution, the church was pillaged and the graves of the de la Marque family were destroyed. This is the remnant of it on your right. And on the left is just a picture of what it looks like today, which looks very charming. So what caused her to come to New France? So Anne left for Canada in 1665 at about the age of 24. Um, the ship that she was sailing on was Le Saint-Jean-Baptiste de Dieppe. And it was, um, it anchored in Quebec City, June 18th, 1665. Let's find out who she picked. The man she selected and who selected her, his name was Pierre Dagenet de Lepin. And he was born about 1635 in the parish of saint Sauveur in La Rochelle. His parents were Arna Dagenet and André Poulet. So let's get to know La Rochelle. As you know, uh, La, La Rochelle is a place that we have gone um, quite a number of times now. So we can see it on the map over there. La Rochelle was founded uh, during the 10th century and became an important harbor in the 12th. Until the 15th century, La Rochelle was to be the largest French harbor on the Atlantic coast, dealing mainly in wine, salt, and cheese. And yes, I always say the same thing, the good stuff. The name was first recorded in 961 as a rupella, 
from a Latin diminutive meaning little rock. La Rochelle has one of the richest histories of all the towns of France, from its beginnings as an area where the Knights of Templar had their strongest base. Eleanor married Henry Plantagen in 1152, who would become King of England as Henry II in 1154, thus putting La Rochelle under Plantagen rule until Louis VIII captured it in the year 1224 during the siege of La Rochelle. During the English control of the city in 1185, Henry II had the Vauclair Castle built, remains of which are still visible in the Place uh, de Verdun, and that's the picture I just showed you here from uh, on the, in the middle of the screen. From 1568, La Rochelle became a center for, La, for Huguenots. It was in La Rochelle that the Protestant revolutions occurred and created the uprising that would become known as the Siege of La Rochelle. Throughout the 1600s, the Huguenots were expelled from this area. So do we think that he was possibly uh, a Huguenot, ex you know, ex um, saving himself? We do not have any kind of confirmation that he had to convert, because if he was Protestant going into New France, he would have had to convert. But it's interesting that we have Anne Verandon, who came from an area where the Protestants were um, found and took refuge. And then we have Pierre. So uh, I don't know. My writers, you know, kind of creates that possibility. So what we believe is that um, he arrived in New France sometime in 1657. We do not, I do not have any proof of that. Uh, but this is what I have been, I've read about. And he was a tailor. So that's an interesting little tidbit. So November 17th, 1665, they are married. Anne and Pierre are married in Montreal. And that's their marriage record. So Pierre and Anne would settle in a place called pointe aux trembles As you can see by the map, it truly is on the tip of the island. One of the um, renowned things about pointe aux trembles is you can find a windmill that was built in 1719 that still exists today. And it, it is actually the tallest windmill in Quebec that still stands. Um, it was kind of a, a concession that was one of the earliest ones that was uh, given. Um, and it is kind of where the uh, Rivière des Prairies and St. Lawrence Rivers merge, making it really an ideal place to defend Montreal. So that really was the essence of pointe aux um, and why it was founded. Um, the construction of a flour mill was not until 1672. So Pierre and Anne would have been uh, among the very first inhabitants in here uh, and truly are uh, probably on the, you know, the colonists, you know, in terms of, of, of um, establishing this as a bona fide uh, place to live. Um, and as the population grew, the priests started having mass and began administering sacraments in the house of, of different people. Um, and eventually they would have, um, they would have the church in 1674 is when they started um, actually creating it. And that is the church that you see in the picture above. Now, I just want to point out that Pierre and Anne would have had, um, in 1681, you can see Pierre is a tailleur, which is a tailor, and he was 50 years of age. His wife, Anne, was 40, so 10 years difference. And then we have their children, Michel, Francois, Cécile, Pierre, and Elisabeth. We have three um, bétacons, which are three goats. And they have nine arpavala, so they had a nice, a nice piece of property. Yeah, we have seven children that they had. Michel, their firstborn, died in infancy. We have Francoise, who married Pierre Roy, and had one child who reached adulthood. We have Cécile, who married Claude Dumais, and had two children who reached adulthood. We have Pierre, who married Marie Drouet, and had nine children, seven of whom reached adulthood. We have Marguerite, who died in infancy. We have Elisabeth, who married Jean-Pierre Auger and had two children, both of whom reached adulthood. And then we have their last born, Cunigonde, who died in infancy. This is when the story takes a tragic turn. On August 5th, 1689, 
they would become victims of the Lachine Massacre on a rainy morning of August 5th. 1,500 Iroquois warriors used surprise to launch against the undefended settlement of Lachine. Now, why they weren't living in Lachine, what happened? On August 9th, Pierre and Anne were captured and killed as the Mohawks continued their terror campaign. They had gone to La Chine, passing by the Rivière des Prairies, and um, they would then find Pierre and Anne, as well as several other neighbors, and burn their houses. This incredible couple would actually have, as of 1729, 78 descendants, which is remarkable given the fact that there weren't that many to begin with. There is a street named Dejeuner that was officially dedicated to the Dejeuner in Montreal. And there is actually um, a spot in um, that area where it is, is located. And there's a wonderful uh, Famille Dejeuner blog spot that I, I'm going to link you so you can absolutely do some more research. It's just remarkable um, that their story lives on. For further research, I wanted to introduce you to La Société des Filles du Roi. Et les soldats du corps Kérignel, and uh, it is a society that I belong to. I'm also the membership chair. It has been in existence since 1994, um, and it has a treasure trove of information. I would urge you to check out the website, and if you're so inclined, um, consider uh, joining uh, and getting a lot more ben member benefits. And then we have a um, Facebook group called Les Filles du Roi Descendants. I believe there's 5,000 of uh, you know, draw, um, members in that uh, group. And then one that I use all the time, a website called Migration, which I love. And it's it's a rabbit hole, I grant you, but you will love it. Um, it will absolutely, no matter who, wh who or what you're lo looking for, you'll probably find it on this website. The story of Anne and Pierre is so sad. And the fact that they lost their lives, their children lost their parents, but yet somehow through the centuries, not only do we remember them um, in this area um, with a street named and uh, all of that, but we also can remember them by the fact that there are descendants that exist and, and are there as proof that they were part of the building of New France. So for that and their sacrifice, we thank them and we honor them. And with that, I thank you, and I will see you on episode number 81. Until then, au revoir.